Can I ask you a hard hitting basketball question? Please. Who's the greatest of all time? So I'm, I'm, if I had to say it, I'm just going to say Jordan. Go, Tiger. LeBron James, is he an all-time great scorer? No, he is the all-time greatest scorer. Is LeBron James know. clutch? Well, he, you could make the argument he's the most clutch player ever. Like, I'll say this with Michael Jordan, and, and I don't mean this to be controversial. Six teams were added to the NBA. There were 90 players added to the NBA. There was more physicality for sure. A lot of that was just harder fouls. Go watch the 1993 NBA Finals against the Phoenix Suns and tell me that was a physical series. When it comes to the current day NBA media, it's becoming increasingly difficult to find people who are influenced by money, the promise of future access. And when it comes to JJ Redick, I've had this guy pegged from day one as a clutch sports client. As any time he opens his mouth, what's he doing? Defending modern day players like Kevin Durant and LeBron James, despite losing and their lack of leadership. And a look at the past eras, guys like Jordan, Bird, Cousy, guys really every era pre-2000 and trash them all day long. Like I'll say this with Michael Jordan, and, and I don't mean this to be controversial, but like everybody talks about all these, the, the context of this era. Michael Jordan, the Dallas Mavericks were, were, were added as the 23rd team in 1981. Jordan was drafted. During his heyday, six teams were added to the NBA. There were 90 players added to the NBA. Now, stopping right there looking at these comments before we dive into them. When this podcast was debuted was April 30th. Now, why is that important? Because on April 29th, LeBron James, his Lakers, were eliminated from the playoffs. So not even 24 hours have passed and Redick already trashing Jordan's entire era. Coincidence? I think not! So when talking about expansion, yes, 1980 the Dallas Mavericks were added as the 23rd team. Now, from 1981 to 89, the NBA yes expanded with four more teams. But ask yourself, why did they expand? Looking at David Stern's words himself, why the league expanded, his overall revenue salary generated increased tenfold. As back in the early 80s, the average salary was $180,000. By 89, it was nearly a million dollars. And one thing Stern also notes is a talent boom in the early and mid 1980s. And if you look at those draft classes from really 81 to 85, I mean, it is stacked, loaded every single season. 1981, you had nine future All-Stars led by Isaiah Thomas. 82, seven future All-Stars led by Worthy and Wilkins. 83, five All-Stars led by Drexler and Sampson. 84, debatably, the greatest draft class of all time led by Jordan. Then 85, a whopping 10 future All-Stars and four Hall of Famers. So yes, the EMA did expand but they expanded with a purpose and not just willy-nilly just to do it for the sake of expanding. And one thing I want to show you guys, looking at every NBA draft from 81 to 90 during the first expansion period, there were six draft classes that produced seven or more All-Stars. Now, looking at LeBron's era, 04 to 2013, a decade time period just like 81 to 90, those draft classes only had one with seven or more All-Stars in them. And if you go year by year, I mean, some of the worst draft classes of all time, major bust, major whiffs, and the overall talent influx not nearly as big as the early 1980s. And if you guys don't believe me think I'm BSing, I'm not telling the truth, look at LeBron James 2010 after joining the Heat. Here's LeBron's comments on the record to Brian Windhorst. LeBron says quite clearly his era compared to the 80s was watered down. And looking back at that era, it was quote unquote great because in the 80s, you had three or four all stars, three or four superstars on every single team. The league was great, it wasn't as watered down as it is now. And LeBron in this article, the entire point of the article, isn't talking expansion of the NBA, but contraction. So think about that. In Jordan's era, the NBA was expanding due to a talent boom. But LeBron James in his era, it wasn't talking expansion but contraction because of lack of talent. 
And when talking about multiple All-Stars, tons of Hall of Famers in one roster, it kind of got me thinking. In LeBron's Eastern Conference, 2010 to 2018, how watered down was it in comparison to Jordan's era from 85-93 during the first 3 peak? Now, the results are kind of shocking. Looking at Jordan's era, teams with multiple All-Stars, there were 26 teams that fit that criteria. Now, looking at LeBron's East, only 18 teams met that criteria. And again, according to LeBron James, what makes teams great, what makes a league great, are squads of multiple All-Stars and multiple Hall of Famers. Six teams were added to the NBA. There were 90 players added to the NBA. Like, that, that does that not water down? Now, stopping that short clip right there, what Reddick makes it seem like is that the NBA all of a sudden just expanded in an instant. It was one year, 90 players were added, and it was done with. Well, that's not entirely true. The NBA of the late 80s, 88 added two teams, having the Hornets and Heat, and then 89, the Wolves and Magic. So it wasn't an all at once 90 players in, just at the drop of a hat. And looking at those four teams, Charlotte, Miami, Minnesota, and Orlando, only one of those teams didn't have success in the 1990s, that being Minnesota. I mean, even the Hornets by 93 were a great team with tons of talent. They had Larry Johnson, Alonzo Mourning, Kendall Gill, Del Curry, even Muggsy Bogues. And from 95-98, 50 wins, 54, and 51. Even looking at the Heat, by 92, had already made the playoffs and by the late 90s were a championship contender. As 97, they won 61 games, 98-55, and then 99 with a first seed in the Eastern Conference. And on those teams, Tim Hardaway, Alonzo Warning, Jamal Mashburn, P.J. Brown, and Old Thunder Dan. Those Heat teams of the late 90s, they were absolutely loaded and stacked. And looking at the best expansion team, you have Shaq's Magic, of course, with Penny Hardaway. This team of the mid-90s was a championship caliber team, as on their roster, of course, Shaq, Penny, Horace Grant, Dennis Scott, and Nick Anderson. Think about that. A quote-unquote expansion team beat Michael Jordan in the middle of his prime. What I'm trying to show you guys, the moniker expansion team is highly misleading and provides no context to the actual talent in the NBA at that time. And again, the funny irony is, Michael Jordan's era being the quote-unquote expansion era. Look at the 2010s and LeBron's era. This era was the era of tanking and trust in the process. Oh no! We suck again! And look at the actual facts of the matter. At the worst records in NBA history, the majority of them were in LeBron's East. The worst team of all time in NBA history, the Bobcats, that won seven games. 2016, Philadelphia, they won 10 games. 2010, the Nets, they won 12. 05, the Hawks, they won 13. Five of the 10 worst teams in NBA history played in LeBron's East. Now, looking further down the list, the 89 Heat, 15 wins. 97 Celtics, also 15. 08 Heat, 2014 Bucks, again 15. The 90s Nets, 17 wins. 2015 Knicks, also 17 wins. Out of the top 50 worst teams in NBA history by record, only three of them played in Jordan's East. A whopping seven were in LeBron's East. And again, doing a head-to-head -head comparison, Jordan versus LeBron, the exact same time period, looking at their Eastern Conferences. When it came to 20 win teams in Jordan's East, only 18. LeBron's East, a whopping 25. Now teams under 20 wins, Jordan 4, LeBron 8. Like, that, that does that not water down? I'm not talking playoffs, by the way. No chance we're talking playoffs. Does that not water down the regular season to a degree? You lived it, you lived it, right? Yeah. You played against some of those teams. You played against the Bobcats. Now, stopping it right there, I'm going to get very, very nitpicky. When Reddick says the Bobcats, they weren't a team till 2004 as an expansion team in LeBron's era. And I do find it quite odd, Reddick, at the very end, he says he's not talking playoff teams, just teams during the regular season. Well, even if that's the case, looking at LeBron's East, LeBron's comp versus Jordan's East, his comp, the teams at the bottom of Jordan's East weren't nearly as bad, nearly as often, as LeBron's East. 
If you're purely talking playoffs, the whole expansion argument is really pointless. What makes him great, well, a bunch of things, but what has made him great is the fact that he's done it now for 21 years at the highest level. Like, you talk about scoring, that's great. So one guy averaged 35 a year. Yeah, LeBron's never averaged 35 in a year. Guess what? He's averaged 25 or more for 20 straight years. No one's had more than 15 of those years. Like, that to me is, he's a scorer. But, but again, it looks differently. It, he plays differently. Now, that right there was our last clip, and for the overall video, it was kind of off subject. But I wanted to put this in there for a couple reasons. When it comes to guys like Reddick, Shannon Sharp, Nick Wright, even Reggie Miller on TNT, all day long, longevity, age 39, year 21. It's almost like all these guys have a sheet they're reading off of and talking points to hit on every show, every game, and every podcast. And in regards to longevity, like I've said numerous times, yes, an aspect of greatness. But here's the thing, someone like John Stockton, for 10 straight years a decade, averaged 10 or more assists. Adam Johnson never did that. Dominic Wilkins, for 10 straight years, averaged above 25 points per game. Larry Bird, in his career, only did it four consecutive seasons. My point being, the obsession with quantity over quality is downright bizarre. And if you're talking LeBron versus Jordan, I'll take MJ for a decade's time period, averaging 35, 36, even 37 points, over LeBron James, who for 20 years was at around 25, 27 points per game on an average year. And last point I will make in regards to Reddick, for someone who, quote, doesn't care about the GOAT debate, doesn't care about Jordan versus LeBron, he spends an awful lot of time debating these two players and trashing Jordan's era, which apparently he doesn't care about. That's kind of odd. And again, the convenient timing. LeBron James one day loses, the next day Jordan's era, it stinks to an expansion era, and was straight garbage. The timing of these comments, it can't be a coincidence. So that right there is the end of the video. As always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.